Today we're going to be talking about how to clone the Windows hard drive on your PC. And so to do that, this is by far the easiest method in my opinion. We're going to be using a piece of software called the Macrium Reflect Home. Now this is paid software, but they do offer a free 30 day trial and it's a fully functioning trial. It's not limited in any way. And so for the purposes of this video, we are actually going to be using that free 30 day trial. Now you're gonna need your Windows PC. You're gonna need a drive that you wanna to clone to. Now that can be either internal or external. In the case of this video, I'm gonna be cloning from an internal NVMe to an internal 7200 RPM hard drive uh, because I really wanna see if Windows 11 will even run off of a 7200 RPM hard drive. It should clone no problem. It's just gonna take forever, but that's not gonna change any of the steps or anything that you need to do for the purposes of this video. You're also gonna need an internet connection. And as long as you have all of that stuff sorted out ahead of time, we're gonna hop on over to the PC and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to get this started. The first thing we need to do is open up a web browser and go to macrium.com. But don't worry, I'm gonna put a link down in the description for you guys. Once you get to the website, you're gonna to need to select on Discover Reflect Home. And then once you do that, you're gonna see a button that says Download Free Trial, and you're gonna to wanna to select that as well. At this point, it's gonna ask you if you want 64-bit or 32-bit, and this is gonna be dependent on the type of computer that you have. For this video, I'm gonna download the 64-bit version. Once you select the version, it will take you to a registration page where you will need to create an account in order to download the software. But don't worry, the account is free. Once you have everything filled out, you will select the registration button. From here, you will get a message that asks you to check your email to activate your account. You will need to click the link in the email to activate your account. Now, this is what my email looks like. I've already activated my account, but just so you can see, once you click this link, it will activate. After you've selected the link, it's gonna take you to a web page. It's gonna ask you to log in. You're gonna use the email address and password that you set up when you registered for an account. Once you get logged in and you look at your overview page, we're going to select step two, where it says install Macrium Reflect Home. This is gonna begin the download for the installation file. Now, after the download is complete, we can open up the file by selecting it from the download section of your web browser, which is typically in the top right corner. This will start the installation process. Now, if you don't see this, or for some reason you just don't have it, you can alternatively go to wherever you save your downloads on your computer, and you can open it up from there. The installation is pretty straightforward. So once we have the file open, you will see there is a setup wizard within the software, and it's gonna walk you through the entire setup process. For this video, we're gonna keep everything at their pre-selected defaults. And when you get to the license key screen, just make sure that the 30-day trial box is checked and select next to continue through the setup process. Here we need to input the email address you use to create your account and then the registration code that was provided on your Macrium dashboard or overview page where we just downloaded the installation file. Now you can see that here and I have my code grayed out obviously, but the code is required to move forward with the installation. On the following screen, we're gonna leave all of the settings the same and select next. And then we're gonna select install on the next screen. Once the installation is complete, you're gonna receive a notification that says you need to reboot your computer. And we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. So we'll be right back. After your computer is rebooted, if you're gonna use an external drive, now is the time to plug that in before we open the software up. Once you've done that and you open the software up, it's gonna ask you the theme you'd like to pick. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this Windows color theme because I like things a little bit darker. And so once you have that all figured out, all we need to do to figure out which drive we wanna clone is you're just gonna click on the drive itself. So we want to clone, in my case, it's gonna be disk three GPT, the Samsung NVMe here. So we're just gonna click on it. And then you'll see that we get this little pop-up right below it that says clone this disk. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select the link on the disk that we wanna clone. And then we're gonna be presented with another pop-up. 
Now here it says that we can drag different partitions to the destination drive, but we don't want to do any of that. We're just going to click the select the disk to clone. And then from there, we're going to pick the drive that we want to clone to because we've already picked our source drive, which is the drive that is above it. Now, if for whatever reason you didn't want to copy everything, you can go ahead and unselect the checkboxes for each individual partition on the drive. And then that will only copy what is selected. We're gonna copy everything, so we're just gonna click next. And then from here, we wanna do it right now so there's no schedule, we're just gonna click next. This is giving us a summary. Everything looks good to me, so we're just gonna go ahead and click finish. This is where if it doesn't look good to you, you can go back and you can go ahead and fix whatever you need to fix. So by all means, please read through this to make sure you're not inadvertently deleting or wiping a drive that you didn't intend to. But like I said, everything looks good to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and click finish. And then from there, we're gonna get another pop-up that says, do you wanna do this right now? And we're gonna make sure that it says run this backup. And we're gonna just select, okay. We're not gonna uncheck anything here. Now from here, we're gonna get a warning and it's basically just saying, hey, we're gonna erase this drive and we're gonna overwrite it with all of the data. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that the box is checked that says that, yep, we agree to wipe this target drive. And then we're gonna go ahead and click next. And then from there, it's gonna go ahead and start the cloning process. Now for me, this is gonna take absolutely forever because again, we are doing this on a 7200 RPM standard disk drive. And so I will be back as soon as this has been completed. Many hours later, this is finally completed. So I'm gonna go ahead and select OK on this little completion screen. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just close out of the software. And I wanna just show you guys, and also just double check, that all of my information is intact on the clone drive. And so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my file explorer. And I just wanna show you that I have my C drive here at the top. And then I have my cloned drive, which is now the E drive at the bottom. And you'll see that they're both named the exact same. And all of the files are the exact same as well. Now that we've completed the cloning process, I'm going to take out my primary drive that we used as the data source to clone from. And I wanna make sure that the copy that we just made is bootable and that all my information is there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll be right back as we're booting. But for science, I did this on a 7200 RPM disk drive, just a standard hard drive. So the boot process on this is actually gonna take forever. So I've sped it up in the video, but just know that it took roughly eight minutes and 38 seconds from the time that I pressed the power on button on my PC to the time that Windows loaded. Now it wasn't usable at that point. It was just, we had loaded to a screen where I could actually log in and attempt to use the computer. It took another six minutes before I even had a start bar loaded. And again, it still wasn't usable. It was like I tried to click on anything and it was just extremely laggy and slow, which was to be expected, but it did work. All my information was there. All my files were there. I didn't have any issues with the actual cloning piece. What I chose to clone to is completely separate. I just did it to see if it would work. But for this video, all of the steps that we took to actually clone the hard drive worked perfectly. As you can see, cloning your Windows PC when using this software is really simple. Now, if you had any problems at all while you were doing this or you have any questions, don't hesitate to hit me up down in the comments and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. I would really love it if you could take the time to hit the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. But that's about all I have for this video, so I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.